Good morning, brothers and sisters. Brother Will here. Uh, before I go any further, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, brothers and sisters, I am super excited. Forgive my voice that just woke up because I did just wake up. And uh, if you know anything about my channel, you'll know this channel began with a seven vignette dream. Seven little little dreams that I had back in the fall of 2020. All of them had to do with the rapture and the end times where we were on God's timeline. It launched the channel, like I said. And last night, I had a seven dream, seven vignette dream again with seven different scenes. As we've talked about many times on this channel, seven is God's number. I think there's a big reason that they come in sevens. Um, but this is only the second time. And it, but I'm saying this because... I think it's a really good indication of where we are and what's about to happen because it bookends my channel. Seven vignette dream to begin, seven vignette dream to begin my channel, and now I just had another seven vignette dream. I'm just gonna get into it. Hopefully this dream, this uh, video won't be too long. So, first scene, I am chopping cucumbers and putting them in a pot of boiling water, and I, I just keep it on and I go to leave. Um, I know it doesn't make any sense to put cucumbers in boiling water. You don't boil cucumbers. Even when you make pickles, you don't boil them. But I'm cop in the moment, in the dream, I'm not thinking anything of it. Just uh, chopping cucumbers, putting them in boiling water, and, and leave it on. Leave the water on to boil, I should say. It wasn't boiling when I put them in. Um, first little scene, but we're going to come back to that scene. And the and, and thing about <clears throat> all of these is there are time and the order these happen is kind of omnipresent, meaning things are happening simultaneously, but there's still seven different scenes. <laughs> Second scene. Um, I go out, and, and that one's at night, by the way, when I'm, when I'm cutting those up. And um, second uh, scene. I go down to, and I'm, I'm, I'm not in my, none of this is in my actual house here, okay? But um, <clears throat> I go down to my garden, and it's a huge, ginormous garden, like way bigger than mine. And um, everything is like perfect. The um, All these leafy greens and like the evening dew is on. They're all like super green, super lush, lots of water on them. Um, you tell it's like been well taken care of. And I just remember thinking to myself when I'm viewing my garden, I remember, and I, and I see other other ones that are like coming up too. There's like fully, and then there's like ones that are about to, you know, come up on time and everything. And, but I, I just remember thinking to myself, wow, like, I just don't even remember planning this stuff. It's like, it's just, I don't even remember, you know, tending this garden like this. Like, it's just amazing that it looks this amazing. Like, I, I don't even remember doing anything for this garden. You know what I mean? So, um, that was just a really cool moment. Um, we're going to get back to the cucumbers in a second. So, um, Next thing is, um, I, I look out on the street um, by, my, by my house, and um, again, it's not my house that I live in, though. And um, the street light, okay, the street light is out. The green part of the street light is out. So I'm, so I, I'm going, oh, I got to go fix that. So then I take a ladder, and I go up to the, to the street light, and there are these little, like the bulbs, are these little strip looking bulbs is weird it wasn't like an actual bulb but anyway I just remember and it was above me it was on the top of my ladder reaching and um so I just count like I, I just pick what I thought was the green one but it was actually the yellow one the the yellow and red were fine they're working fine but um the green one was out so I I adjust the yellow one and I make it where it's not working but I was like eh we don't need yellow anyway yeah <laughs> and so then um this is just in my mind. And so then I go down to the green one and I fix it and the green one's on now. So um, if you're following along with me, by the way, and by the please be praying. Let the Holy Spirit give you discernment. Let the Holy Spirit give you the spiritual gift of dream interpretation as well. I mean, these are usually with my dreams, they're pretty clear. I think you're probably already getting what that might be speaking to. Um, so I left it green, got down, and, and so now the, the stoplight has red and green and the green is working. Um, Go back inside, or, or go back to the, um, yeah, go back to my house. My dad is arriving at my house. Um, 
and he's like super happy to be there. It's that classic kind of feeling. My wife, by the way, in the dream is pregnant. Um, and, but, but like pretty, pretty, like not like she's showing. So, um, and, um, he's, it's, we have that whole like exchange of, you know, really glad to be there and love what you've done with the place. And, you know, all the pleasantries that come with when a parent comes to visit their kids or their adult kids. And, um, so, and, and we're like, you know, he's like, we're telling him sleep wherever you want, you know, find the room that, that you want to, you know, be in and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, er everything's good. And he chooses the room like downstairs. Um, and so, um, maybe that's two or it's at least two story, um, situation. And, uh, then is when I go back and I see, like, after he gets settled in, I go back and I see, oh, the cucumbers I forgot to turn them all, all while I was doing the light and all while I was doing everything else like I forgot to turn the cucumbers off and they're like just torched they're like just they, they're way overboiled way overcooked and in my mind I'm thinking I wasn't like mad about it but in my mind I'm thinking Ugh, that's annoying like I hate wasting anything you know what I mean I just wasted that cucumber um but it wasn't like this huge oh devastating thing it was just kind of like I was an oh uh, and I and I saw myself like turning the 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 heat off and um, I remember thinking to myself, I'm never going to do that again. How dangerous is that? I, I just was doing a million other things and I left the, the water boiling. It could have been on all night had I thought about it. You know, and I, I was like, I'm just, I'm never going to do that again. And um, so that was kind of the, the, the end of that vignette of the, of the boiling cucumber vignette. Um, and so uh, then I go back and I, and I had all the windows open up in the upstairs part. And I was like, oh, you know, someone could come in and break in. Like I... I should close, I should close these windows. And so, um, I am trying to close the windows, but they're just not latching. You know what I mean? It's just like, I'll close it and like it latches, but then you just pull it right open and all this stuff. It was like it, but I wasn't concerned about it. And then in the back of my mind, I remember, Oh, my dad's here. No one's coming. No one's breaking in. You know what I mean? Like I didn't even have to worry about this. I left it closed, but I was like, who cares? My dad's here. Everything's good. Like we don't have to worry about anything. So, um, then, uh, the next vignette, so we have the cucumber vignette, we have the, um, garden vignette, we have the stoplight vignette, we have the dad coming to the house vignette. Um, the next one is I'm on a cruise with my wife, who's, remember, uh, pregnant in the dreams, and, but it, it feels like our honeymoon, but yet, obviously, we're already married and, and she's already pregnant. But it's like this this joyous cruise, and we're hanging out with like the the cruise director, and it's just a everyone's having a, a great time. We're all getting along, everything's awesome. And then uh, one of the either the officers or the cruise director says, um, "It's time, watch this." And so um, we're in one of the big rooms on the ship where you can like see out the like you know it's a picture window where you can just see everything. And they're like, "Watch this." And they floor the ship, meaning like, you know, whatever you do to make a ship go faster, but it felt like warp speed. Okay. And again, if you're, it doesn't take much, much discernment from the Holy Spirit to know what we're talking about here. And the ship we're going like, like I brace myself against the glass, against the things that are against the like frame that's holding the glass because we're going so fast. And it's just like, I mean, just again, like warp speed, speed from Star Wars, if it was on a cruise ship. Um, so that was the next vignette skip or then go to the sixth scene. The sixth scene was all of these other ships, small ships, big ships, other cruise ships. Oh, and, and while we're going fast, by the way, there are voices that are all going like, this is too fast. You got to stop. No, it's going to like, you know, we're going to crash. Or we're going to cause other people to crash and all our wake's going to cause ships to crash. Da, da, da. Like that's what other people are like saying. Um, and so that the sixth scene is all of these boats from the wake of our cruise ship going really fast are like caps. I mean, huge cruise ships, capsized other boats crashing into each other. It's like, you know, if you can imagine one of those like boat festival days where there's like all different boats in the harbor or whatever, but they're all going, you know, slow and, and, you know, careful. But, but this ship that we were on that was, you know, went warp speed essentially, um, caused all these ships to crash and wreck and all kinds of stuff. There's just destruction everywhere. Um, that was the sixth scene. And then the seventh scene, um, 
obviously my wife's been pregnant this whole time and she's ready to, to deliver. And I remember us just, I can just like hear myself and her talking like, what are we going to, what do you want to wear for this? You know? And, and I, I just remember thinking, well, you know, keep it simple. This is a, this is such a holy thing. Um, you know, maybe something white or, or what have you. And I remember, you know, they're like preparing the room. She was going to be delivered like in this kind of Mediterranean style house um, that was, you know, way, way nicer than the house that we were in. Um, and so the, in the first couple scenes of the dream, it was this Mediterranean style house. And, you know, everyone's like laying down these like really comfortable sheets and everything. And my youngest daughter was going to be there and I knew that was going to bring um, my wife really good comfort and it was going to be just she's going to be such a, a great help to the situation and then the last part of this scene this vignette is my wife's just coming down the the steps to go into the delivery room and she's just glowing white like glorified body glowing white and she just has this amazing smile on her face super happy and that's the end of the last vignette so, um, <laughs> I, again, I had to rush out here and give you all these guys. Uh, you can't, you can't even write this stuff in a script, you know, that my channel started with seven dreams and I, I really think this is probably, you know, if not the last video, it's definitely, we're getting there. It could very well be the last video. Um, so what do these things mean? Just in, in my praying about it, again, I'm sure you'll get more insight, but in my praying about it, um, the, the chopping the cucumber and putting it in boiling water, water everything else, it, it represents the uh, foolishness and futile futility of our own works, okay? And like that, you know, those things are, you know, they amount to nothing, but it doesn't matter because the harvest that those of us who are in Christ, the harvest of his good works that we haven't even done again like i was like i didn't even do this you know it's that whole verse of lord when did we see you you know hungry or thirsty and give you a drink and when do we see you in prison and visit you you know is those kind of things is that like you know he's done the work and there's this amazing garden you know that was just flawless it was perfect um and for those of us those of you who are walking with the lord jesus who are led by the holy spirit um there's a harvest coming and by the way the harvest was ready like it could have I could have picked any of those things and had them to eat right there in the dream so the harvest is ready I think that's another aspect of that um obviously the stoplight again um the green had been out but not only did the green get turned back on but the yellow was removed so basically what I think that's saying is all these warnings to like get ready and everything else and like you got time to like oh you see it's about to turn red you know or you see it's about to turn green like the yellow to like you know let you know one way or the other but it really felt in the dream like the yellow was what would happen before it turns green so um it's like the yellow's removed and it's just going to turn green now it's just going to it's going to go from red to green no warning um again i think that's speaking to the imminence of where we are on god's timeline regarding rapture specifically regarding rapture i mean you got the, the the harvest is ready you got the light um dad comes to the house um everything is this, like great reunion moment um didn't have to worry about the enemy breaking in um stealing and killing and destroying i think i'm still praying through this part of it because i think that also has some aspect of that verse about um, you know, if, the, oh, I don't, I didn't bring my Bible out cause I just ran out here to do this, but you know, if the master of the house knew what time the thief would break in, um, ah, I gotta look, go look it up. I'll post it in the comments or something, but, or one of you post it in the comments, but I feel like that had, you know, that he would not have allowed his house to be broken into, but at the same time, like the father, my dad, I, I always in my dreams represents the heavenly father. So, um, he was in the house. So it was like, I didn't have to worry about anything. Like there was no... I feel like anyone with the Holy Spirit, that would apply. You don't have to worry about, I, I think this is ultimately what it's saying. We don't have to worry about the day catching us like a thief. Because the thief was coming into, a, I was wanting to close the windows because I didn't want the thief to break in. You know what I mean? It's, it's, the, it's the verse that Jesus says multiple times. Um, I will not come on you like a thief if you're watching. Okay, so actually I have a couple videos ago talking about that. So um, 
the father was in the house. I didn't even have to worry about the thief breaking in. Um, so that was, let that be an encouragement to some of you um, who may be um, having, I don't know, stress or anxiety or worrying about, about things like that. Um, next part. Okay, yeah. Um, and, and by the way, this whole concept of being with child, wife with child, I really, I feel like, you know, there's some points in this dream where I feel like almost I represent, like myself, I don't represent myself. Could it be that I'm representing the Lord Jesus himself in the dream and that um, my wife is, you know, Israel in the dream? I That's basically in a couple of these things, that's what I, a couple of these scenes, that was the sense that I was getting. Um, because different, a lot of times in my dreams, I don't represent myself, if that makes sense. Um, even though I'm the one that's going through it. So anyway, um, the cruise scene. <laughs> Couldn't be more straightforward, right? Uh, everyone's, we're all excited. We're on this, essentially, honeymoon, ready for, you know, fun, and ready for just a great time, and it goes as fast as possible, you know, faster than any cruise ship could ever humanly go. Um, and so, for me, that's that was the rapture in the dream, in the form of a cruise ship, you know, zooming through the water. The wake that the rapture will cause... Everyone left behind is going to be total destruction, total chaos, total, um, you know, all, all the other boats that are left are going to crash. You know, all the boats that are left are going to be capsizing and lots of people are going to be dying and there's going to be a lot of destruction. And that was the sixth scene, essentially, seen, you know, through the image of if it was boats, you know, but every the boats represent people. The boats represent, you know, those who are left behind. Um, so get on the ark, get on the cruise ship ark. All right, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, the final scene, of course, um, my wife coming down in this Mediterranean-style house. Um, everything's just perfect, you know, for the delivery, and um, she's glowing, you know, with that uh, just kind of glorified body look with this amazing smile on her face. So to me, that symbolized, um, to me, that symbolized, you know, the woman is is ready to give birth. Um, as you know from Revelation 12. So uh, the woman being Israel, that's why I say I think she represented Israel in that moment. But um, anyway, that was my dreams from just a little while ago. And they were not dreams from last night. They were dreams from this morning. Um, what's today? I think September 30th, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> okay, I'm still waking up. But um, I'll put it in the actual title of the video. So anyway, um, I sell that as a huge encouragement, hopefully, to you, brothers and sisters, who are already in Christ Jesus, to those of you who are watching and waiting on the soon coming of our Lord Jesus. Rapture is imminent, guys. We're here coming up on Feast of Trumpets. As you've seen from all my other videos, all the other Watchmen community videos out there, this is the highest watch time of all time. Um, if you do not know the Lord Jesus, that yellow light has been removed. Like, there... The, time for warnings and everything else is gone. It's going to just, it's going to happen. You need to come to the Lord Jesus. You need to believe on Christ. You need to put your faith and trust in him. How do you do that? You just simply, as it says in Romans, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. What does that mean when you believe in your heart? You're believing on who he said he is. Who did he say he is? Well, Jesus is the one name under heaven whereby we must be saved. He was with God in the beginning, through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. However, he came down, took the form of a baby, lived a perfectly sinless life, um, was born of a virgin, uh, lived a perfectly sinless life. We, all of us, have sinned. We deserve death. The penalty for sin is death. However, Jesus, who lived a sinless life, took that penalty upon himself on the cross, paying our sin debt. After he died, he was in the in the tomb for three days and then rose again, proving that he is who he says he is. He is the almighty God, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Um, just like the thief on the cross, there's not time. If, if you want to go on the rapture, there's not time to do a bunch of works and good deeds. Not that those, those things are filthy rags anyway. All you have to do is believe on his finished work. He did all the work. It says in scripture, how do we work the works of God? Believe on him whom God hath sent. Who is Jesus? That, that is who that person is. That is who you believe on, Jesus Christ, whom he sent. Um, so that's what it comes down to. Believe in your heart. 
Everything Jesus did, everything he said was true. He is who he says he is. Believe it, confess it. Jesus, you are Lord. Say it and that you believe it in your heart. You will be saved. The Holy Spirit will come in you. You will be born again. Your spirit will have new life and you will be led by the Holy Spirit. You'll go forever in eternity with your Lord Jesus to be with him in everlasting life. I pray you did that if you haven't already, brothers and sisters. And I'm going to make this video short, so get on with our days. But let this be a huge encouragement to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for just giving your people dreams and visions and words in these last days, as you said in your, in your word, that you would pour out your spirit on all flesh, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for just another amazing encouragement. Um, you're so good, Holy Spirit. You're so good, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. All glory, all honor, all praise, all thanks to you, our Creator God, the everlasting God. Thank you. As we always say on this channel and everything we say and do, brothers and sisters, may the Lord Jesus be magnified. Amen. God bless you guys.